morning. Would you put your hands together and worship with them as they come to sing this morning? Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands today? Every time I lift my hands, it's because of you. Every time I lift my voice, it's because of you. Every time I give you praise, it's because of you. Every time I bless your name, it's because of you. It's because of you that I sing. Because of you, it's because of you. 
No more bondage. I am free. Do you feel free today? Yeah. If you do, give them high praise. Step out of your comfort zone. No more shackles. No more Remember chains. Remember when God filled no you? No more bondage. I
lift up Jesus. Lift up his name. The holiness of God is so clean, it's so pure. Darkness can't withstand it. When light shines, darkness has to back up. Darkness has to back up. Because the light of Christ is greater than any darkness. Hallelujah. That's why we worship Jesus. Because he delivered us from the darkness that was in our lives. Whatever was shattered, whatever was bruised, he put things back together and created us something new. Thank you, Jesus, for the light. Thank you, Jesus, for your light. And right now, you might be feeling like you have darkness in your life. You might be going through something today. You might come in with confusion, but God doesn't want that. And when you begin to present that to God and you lift him up and worship him, the light of Christ comes upon you and all that begins to go away. The darkness begins to back up and he trades in depression. He trades in a sorrow, a brokenness for a joy. He trades it in for true love. He gives you pure wisdom that you can't find in the world. Amen. And he makes you whole. He brings wholeness to your soul. He brings wholeness to your life. And so right now, I want to I wanna pray for those, for you. If you're dealing with something right now, you feel like a piece is missing and it just doesn't fit. I can't find it anywhere else. You won't find it in the alcohol. You won't find it in the drugs. But you'll find it in Jesus Christ. I want you to lift your hand up. I want us to present that need to God. I want you to present that pain to God. I want you to present that need to the Lord. And God is going to answer it right now. Lord Jesus, today I'm praying, Lord, you are holy. You are holy. You are holy, God. You are pure. You are clean. You are righteous, God. Your wisdom is pure, Lord. Like a babe to a mother, Lord, you provide. You are God Almighty. You give us provision. You bring pieces together in your own unique way, God. And on our own way. I pray in the name of Jesus, make us whole. Make us whole, Lord God. Heal the wounds that are today, Jesus. Heal the wounds, Lord God, the scars uh, that have pain in them. In the name of Jesus, sickness has to flee. Depression has to flee. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Church, worship the God. Worship the Lord. Worship Jesus. He is holy. He is worthy. He deserves all our worship. He deserves that. And I, Lord, I worship you because you first loved me. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you for making me clean. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord as we go into worship and praise. Praise the Lord, church. Does anyone know why we pray? Because we serve a living God. We serve a God who hears us and he is not lax concerning his promises to us. Most of you know this song. Please sing with me. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear 
life's fine, no war with pain, and then as death gives way to victory, I'll see those lights of glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful this morning that he's not dead in a grave somewhere, but he's alive and he's risen this morning. Can you give him your worship? Give him your praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Amen, amen. Let's give him another hand clap this morning. Praise God. We're going to prepare to receive our tithe and offering this morning. Ask the ushers to come and give, uh, receive this morning. And as they're preparing to come, want to keep a couple of things in front of you. Amen. This Friday night, amen, uh, Brother Jaheed and Sister Crystal will be getting married. Amen. So please come on out. And uh, join them in their celebration, amen, right here at the church, amen, 6 p.m., you will want to be a part of that. Also, this Thursday will be Picnic and Praise, amen, 7 p.m., uh, right here in the church, amen, please bring a dish uh, to pass and to share, amen, and we always have such a wonderful time uh, fellowshipping with one another, breaking of bread, amen, and it's going to be a wonderful time in the Lord, amen. Also, as we are moving forward, I want to let everybody know that this afternoon there will be a ice truck outside of the church when you exit this morning. This is a uh, fundraiser. All the proceeds will go towards our Sunday school department. Uh, so please help us uh, bless our children and our Sunday school teachers as they are investing into our kids. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then also on Saturday, this Saturday afternoon, this week, uh, there will be a, a gospel concert right here at our church. Amen. We have some various artists all of, uh, that will be coming in and to bless us in song. Amen. And you will want to be a part of that. All the churches across Maryland and D.C. will be joining with us. Amen. So please come on out this Saturday and be a part of our gospel concert. Amen. Praise God. Let us stand this morning. We're going to pray over our tithe and our offering. Amen. And then you can come and give unto the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for you are sovereign and you are great and you are mighty. And we bless your holy name this morning, God, because there is none like you, Jesus. And so we give unto you from the abundance of our heart today. I pray that you would bless all that have to give and those who do not, God. I pray let there be a window of heaven that would open up and pour out your blessings upon your people, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask all these things in your glorious name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 As they sing, would you march and come and give this morning?
Hallelujah. Whatever you need him to be this morning, would you begin to declare that? Would you speak that into the atmosphere right now? Healer, protector, savior, deliverer, great. Hallelujah. Whatever you need in your life this morning, hallelujah, speak faith into that situation right now. Hallelujah. Release God into your life. Hallelujah. Let him go before you. Hallelujah. Let him work great in your life. Hallelujah. We can't do it on our own. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible to them that believe this morning. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, we serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God this morning. Come on. Release your praise unto him this morning. Clap your hands and rejoice together. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Such a blessing to be able to be with you in service this morning. Amen. I'm excited about coming to the house of the Lord, being in the presence of God. There's no place. Amen. No place I would rather be. Amen. Praise God. Can't find this in a drug like Brother Isaac said. Can't find it in the bottom of a bottle somewhere. Amen. But whatever you are looking for, Amen. Jesus is the only one that is sufficient to fulfill that desire and that need that you have in your life. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to remind everybody we are having All Nations Sunday. It is the third Sunday of September. And we want you to encourage your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, co-workers, amen, whoever God has placed in your life, amen, to come and be with you in the house of the Lord, amen. Praise God. We will be having a special guest speaker and evangelist that will be with us, amen, and you're going to be tremendously blessed by the ministry of the word of the Lord. So do whatever you can to get all nations into this house on that Sunday morning, amen. We have a lot of pride in our church about the different nations that are represented within these four walls. But I want to challenge us to change our focus this year. Not so much on what is within, but what is without. Amen. We need to look into the streets to the lost world church and see that people are looking for a savior. Amen. Praise God. So please be in prayer with us as we are leading up to All Nations Sunday. We will have some brochures for you to pass out. Amen. Encourage somebody to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Also, all men, any men that are available this afternoon, I'm asking any men who might be able to come out and uh, help us. Pastor Isaac is transitioning his apartment over to his new home, and he needs some help this afternoon around 5 o'clock. So please see Brother Isaac and Sister Maria, and they can give you their address. Amen. Praise God. So that's this afternoon, 5 o'clock. If you can help us, it would be very, very appreciative. Amen? Praise God. If you have your Bibles this morning, let's turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 5. Amen? 2 Chronicles chapter 5. We're going to look at verse number 12 this morning. Amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse number 12. And it says, also the Levites, which were the singers, and all them of Asaph and Heman and of uh, Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests surrounding the trumpets. Verse 13, and it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then. The house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not even stand to minister 
by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Hallelujah. Church, this morning, I want to talk to us about the origin of worship. Amen. Would you put your Bibles down and would you pray with me this morning? Father, hallelujah, God. You have been in this house since the very beginning, God. And I am praying that you would release your spirit upon every hearer that is under the sound of my voice this morning, God. Bind every principality and power that would come to rob, steal, and destroy in Jesus' name. Release faith. Release attention, I pray, God. Let your word be confirmed with signs following this morning, God. Let sons and daughters be born into the kingdom this morning, God. Show us your glory, almighty one. Fill this house where we stand this morning, God. Let your praises be lifted, Lord God. Let there be rejoicing. Rejoicing and gladness in our hearts this morning because of who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, put your hands together one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I wonder just where you're standing. Would you with all your might and with all your soul this morning, would you give God your highest praise? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. I stand before you today. I wanted to preach something different to you. Amen. But the Holy Ghost would not allow me to come before you. Amen. And preach what I had thought in my own mind. Amen. There was such a mighty presence of the Lord that met me here in this sanctuary yesterday. Hallelujah. And I bring to you a word that I believe God wants this church to hear this morning. The origins of worship. Amen. Many of you stand here or sit here this morning and you might think we look a little weird and we might sound a little weird this morning but I want you to know that what we have just done God is the author of this morning <laughs> hallelujah I'm telling you that this is God's orchestration his plan this is what he desires us to do when we come together amen hallelujah Amen. In the beginning, the Bible tells us God created the heavens and the earth. I want you to know before there was ever any essence of time or beginning, there was God. He is the author of the time. He is the author of creation this morning. Amen. The Bible tells us before any of that, before there even was a concept of beginning, there was God. Amen. And we know that the Bible teaches us and tells us that in the beginning, was God and God uh, robed himself in flesh and he dwelt among us. Amen. The word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. Amen. And they that worship him, they worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. And that God's spirit, amen, it took on humanity. Amen. So the invisible God would be visible to humanity. I want you to know this morning, church, that God desires a personal relationship with each and every single one of you. Hallelujah. I'm thankful this morning that I do not just have religion, amen, or rituals when I come to church. Hallelujah. And God forbid if you came in here this morning looking for rituals, you've come to the wrong place. Hallelujah. This is a personal encounter with God. Amen. I don't just lift my hands because it looks good and everybody else is lifting their hands. I don't open up my mouth and sing the songs just because they they put the words up there on the screen for me. This is not a sing-along. This is not Disney, folks. I'm telling you, this is worship unto the King of kings and to the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And God orchestrated all of these things. The origins of worship itself come from God himself. Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning was God. We already talked about that. Amen. And he 
spoke the world into existence. Amen. Everybody touch your Bible this morning. Grab your Bible. Put your Bible in the air this morning. How many of you brought your word to the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. We were in our small group with our hyphen last week. Amen. And we were talking about the various ways that God speaks to us. Amen. And if you have never heard the voice of God in your life before, I want you to grab that word and put your eyes to it. Amen. Because the Bible itself is inspired by God. What are you saying? I'm saying that the words that are printed on that page are from the mouthpiece of God himself. Hallelujah. You say, well, hold on a second. History tells us that there were authors and writers that penned the scriptures that we read about. Yes, that is true. But the Bible also tells us that as the Spirit moved upon these men of God, they wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? There are many writers, yes, but there's only one author. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does that mean? It's not to confuse you or confound you this morning. There is no errors in that word of God. There is no infallibility in your word of God this morning. Hallelujah. You say, oh, well, it was translated. It was written in an old language, Greek and Hebrew and blah, 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 blah. Oh, anyway, get beside all of that this morning. Hallelujah. These men, they wrote. They wrote in their own tongue. Yes, hallelujah. But God was flowing through them by by his power and by the overshadowing of his spirit. You ought to have a confidence in what you read this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, it's not King James's version. It might be in his dialect and his translation, his tongue, so that you can understand. Amen. But this, the King James version that you hold in your hand, is the closest translation that we have to the very first scribes that wrote down on the piece of paper. Amen. All other translations, they progressed years after the King James Version was authored and typed and printed for us. Therefore, since the decades have passed, they have taken out selective words that have changed the meaning of your Bibles. Do I like other translations? Yes. Do I refer to them for study's sake? Yes. But I always base everything that I found myself upon, upon that original translation. Amen. What I'm trying to say to you this morning, church, is that God spoke. His spirit moved upon man. They wrote, and therefore you have the word of God in your hands this morning. How many of you are thankful that you can touch the voice of of God. Hallelujah. So God spoke these. What am I, why is that important? Because I want you to realize that what we did in this house this morning was derived from God himself. Because the Bible was from God, it was spoken by God, the instructions that are found in the scripture are from God himself. You read the book of Exodus and Leviticus and God gives explicit directions and instructions to Israel and how they should worship. Hallelujah. Therefore, we today in the 21st century, we take our example, we take our instruction, our teaching from the word of God. Therefore, we find what we do in our services derived from the voice of God, derived from the scripture itself. Therefore, what we do in this church is God's plan for worship. Somebody say amen. In order for us to understand the origins of creation and worship, we must understand and look back to history itself. Amen. We look to the Jewish culture. Amen. Who God gave these instructions to. For it was this past manner of worship that helps shape the early church and in their worship this morning. 
after the children of Israel, they left Egypt. God gave the people of Israel the law of Moses. Amen. And he commanded that a tabernacle be constructed. The tabernacle was a place of worship for the Israelites. The tribe of Levi, they were set aside, amen, to serve as priests for God in the temple. The Old Testament books that I talked to you about, Exodus, Leviticus, they give us instructions on how worship was to occur. But what about what was about to take place amen was commanded from God. He told them that they were to worship him and him alone. Deuteronomy 6 4 tells us here O Israel the Lord our God is one. Amen and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of your heart with all of your mind and with all of your strength and him alone should you worship this morning can I tell you church that the Old Testament church amen that received these instructions they worship God and God alone hallelujah friend you can't tear me away from the name of Jesus Uh, you can't remove me from the name of Jesus hallelujah I don't believe in Father Son Holy Ghost I believe yes those were offices and positions that Jesus Christ fulfilled amen the spirit of God, amen, that he worked in, hallelujah, that he dwelt with humanity over the course of time, but Israel he said, look, Israel I know all the other nations have their many, many gods and their idols, but you are my people and you shall be called by my name, and therefore you shall serve me and me alone, Exodus chapter 33 and 10 tells us that when all the people when they saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tabernacle, that all the people in Israel would arise out of their own personal tents and they were called to worship, amen, at the doorpost of their own tent. Amen. If I could put up a picture there, I would, amen. I didn't prepare that far in advance, amen. But amen, but in the center of out there in the desert was the tabernacle that God instructed Moses to build. It was a large tent, amen, and the priests that we read about, the Levites, they would come and they would offer sacrifices unto God, amen, as a form of worship, amen. And through their worship, the Bible tells us that a pillar of cloud would manifest, it would become visible. And this was the presence of God. This let them know that God was visiting with them. The invisible God made himself visible unto the children of Israel. And when they saw that cloud ascend upon that tent, they all arose out of their own personal tents. Can I tell you, church, that the manifestation of the presence of God cannot only happen at church? If this is the only place that you feel the power and the glory of God, that is not how God orchestrated the origin of your worship. When they saw the cloud, the Bible says they stood from their tent and they worshiped. What does that mean? They worshiped from their own home. It was symbolic for everyone. Everyone in that community stood and worshiped when they saw the presence of God fill the tabernacle. They did it in front of their children. They did it in front of their spouses. They did it themselves, amen. When they saw that cloud ascend down, they all reverenced the presence of God and they were called into worship, amen. We have got to embark upon that same journey in our spiritual lives, church. We cannot be satisfied or fulfilled by just experiencing God on a Sunday morning only basis amen but we have got to take that glory that we have uh, associate ourselves with here in the service and we have got to take it home to our own tents amen hallelujah it's got to be in my heart it's got to be in my spirit and it can't just rest with me but I've got to bring my 
completely into this this morning. I've got to be an example for my wife to follow. I've got to be an example for my children to follow. My wife ought to see me worship. My wife ought to see me pray. My children ought to see me sing and dance and lift my hands in the presence of God. It can't just be something that the church does. Amen. It can't just be something that the singers do. Amen. To entertain you and I this morning. Church, if you just come to watch and spectate, you're here for the wrong purpose. And you're outside of the origin of worship. Hallelujah. Worship then moved beyond a tent, amen, and God spoke, amen, to King Solomon to construct a temple in Jerusalem so that he could be worshipped. And it appears that the emphasis of worship in the temple was uh, primarily on sacrificial offerings and praise to God through music. This is where we see our first entrance of music into our worship, as well as trained vocal choirs that would sing. And this is very closely associated, amen, to the type of worship that you have witnessed here this morning, singing and instruments of praise, amen. And numerous passages all throughout the scripture, they refer to the music, both vocal and instrumental, used in worship to God during that time. 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse number 5 tells us, uh, and it says that the Ark of the Covenant was being brought to Jerusalem. And so David and all of the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord. Amen. With all kinds of instruments made of fir wood and with lyres, harps, tambourines, uh, and symbols, amen. So what you have seen here this morning, the crashing on the symbols, the striking on the keys, the vocals that went out this morning, this isn't 21st century church. We didn't get this off of YouTube or howtobuildachurch.com, amen. This came from the word of God, the voice of God himself. He said, praise me, praise him on the high sounding symbols, praise him on the temporal and the dance. Let Everything that have pray, breath, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, I want you to know this morning, hallelujah, that when we begin to praise, hallelujah, that's when the glory cloud, that's when the Shekinah glory, the presence of God begins to hover and fill the tabernacle. Woo, hallelujah. I feel my spirit rising up within me. Hallelujah. Why am I getting so excited? Hallelujah. Because when I come into worship uh, and I get beside Side myself uh, and I get a little dance in my heart hallelujah dancing like David danced the Bible said David told his people he said get that tabernacle get that ark of the covenant what was the ark of the covenant when it was in the temple that's where the spirit dwelt amen they would watch the priests the priest in Solomon's temple would go beyond the veil of where nobody else could go and this was called the holies of holies only the high priest there were several priests we read about, 120 that stood with the trumpets, amen, but there was a high priest, one in all of Israel, and him and him alone was only able to go beyond that veil, and he only could go once a year unto the Ark of the Covenant, and right before his very eyes, he would pour a little bit of blood from off of the altar from that lamb that was slain for sacrifice to cover Israel's sins this morning. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that high priest, uh, he would go before the presence of God and he would pour that blood on that altar and right before his eyes, amen, the spirit of God would rest on that ark and it would soak up that blood from off of that, all, that ark. What am I trying to tell you this morning? Hallelujah, that God saw humanity sin and he made a way for their sins to be covered. Hallelujah, I'm so thankful this morning, hallelujah, that I don't have have to go to a high priest anymore of humanity but I can go to the high priest this morning King Jesus huh? so that when he died on the cross hallelujah he said my blood is sufficient for thee Oh, come on, give him some praise. Come on, give him some worship huh? if you're thankful this morning for the blood of Jesus. And 
they would watch the glory of God ascend upon their presence. Uh, oh, church, why am I so moved? Hallelujah. Because I came in here seeking a direction from God, and God spoke to me and said, if you will worship uh, the way that I orchestrated worship, you will see the visible manifestation of my power and my glory in your city. Woo. <laughs> I'm serving notice to every demon and devil that is upon this city this morning. We have power in the name of Jesus and we come into the house of God to worship the one who is and is above all else. Hallelujah. He shall be worshiped. He shall be glorified. He shall be exalted and lifted high. And if I can get it in myself to get my hands up and to get my voice out uh, and get a little jump in my step when the timbrel and the dance gets moving, hallelujah, then I will see the glory of God in my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're going to see it in this church. Uh, hallelujah. When some of you come alive in the Holy Ghost uh, and you get beyond your comfortable pew this morning, you get down into the altar and you get a little dance and you get a little shout. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, you ought to release your praise this morning. Come on, somebody ought to punch the devil in his face this morning. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy. I'm not going to let the devil steal my voice. I'm not going to let the devil steal my shout, my dance, my worship. It was orchestrated by God. Ha. And why is this so important? Because Lucifer himself, hallelujah, was the instrument of praise in heaven. And he rebelled against God and God kicked him out. And ever since then, he has been trying to steal worship and praise from God. Now, this might sound a little bit harsh to you this morning. Hallelujah. But I feel the glory of God. If you are comfortable just sitting there, you have the spirit of Antichrist because God desires to be worshipped. And if you never sing a song, you never raise your hand, you never dance, you're stealing worship from God. And that is the spirit of the devil himself. His purpose is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. God wants you to come into worship so that he can show you his power. And reveal his glory unto you. Because when you get a glimpse of his glory. When you see who God is. And no matter what circumstance or opposition that would ever come into your life this morning. Would ever stop you from progressing forward with God. But if you can compose yourself and be satisfied with just sitting there, then your life is going to be a struggle. And that is not the origin how God created you to be. God wants to do great things in this church, folks. He wants to show you his glory. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse number 12. Verse 4, all the way to 14. He speaks of all the Levite singers. And they got all their instruments and they were singing and praising on, blowing on the trumpets. And 
and they heard a voice of praise and glory unto God. They all did it together. Brother Ryan, get that video ready for me. And when they lifted up their voice, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and when they praised, when they praised the Lord, saying, not with their lips closed, when they praised the Lord, saying, He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Then, the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not stand to minister because the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house. All across the scriptures, we read throughout the Psalms, and Psalms is a book of praise. Psalms 33 and 1 through 3 says, Rejoice in the Lord, all ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and with the instrument of strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud voice. Psalm 68 and verse 4. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Psalm 92 and 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name. Psalm 95 verse 1 through Three, all, one through three and six says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Lift up, let us li come before his presence with thanksgiving. Come before his presence. Come before his presence. Come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him. Hallelujah. For the Lord is great and great. Great king above all gods. Oh, come, verse 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come, rejoice. Oh, come, magnify. Oh, come, praise him. Lift him up. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto God. Can you hear the voice of God this morning, Cross Creek? Can you hear the call of the Holy Ghost this morning? Worship, worship the King. Worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Hallelujah. I want you to see how the Jews worship God this morning. If they're going to get that ready, hold on a second. But they, amen, they look to a Messiah. They don't have the full revelation of Jesus Christ yet. And I want you to see how people who are still honoring and living for the invisible God, when you and I can see a manifestation of his power and his glory every single week when we come to church, I want you to see how these people worship and how they honor God. Go ahead. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah, hallelujah, of people that have yet to see a visible manifestation of God. Hallelujah. I didn't see one person just sitting there. They were all, God, come on, brother. Come on, come. You're not dancing around yet? Come on with me. Come on. Whatever they say, hallelujah, worshiping. Come on. You're not moving yet? Come on. Woo, come with us. Come with We're worshiping our God. We're worshiping our God. Come on. We're coming in before his presence. We're honoring him. We're worshiping him. Come on. Don't just sit there. Don't just stand and watch and look. Hallelujah. But we've come to exalt him. We've come to worship him. We've come to praise him. I've come to sing. They were all chanting. They were all worshiping. They were all glorifying God. Oh, come on. If you've come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. Lift your hands. Get a little jump in your step. Hallelujah. Get beyond that comfortable seat. Hallelujah. Step out into an aisle somewhere. Begin to worship him. Begin to dance before his presence. Oh, come. Oh, come to worship. Oh, come to rejoice. Magnify. Sing unto me. That's it, come on, sister. Shake that tambourine on the sultry and on the harps, on the timbrel of dance. I've come to worship. I've come to praise. Come on, I hear a little chant coming from you this morning. They were speaking in their native tongue, but I wonder if some of you would speak in the Holy Ghost this morning. What kind of chant will we create in this house this morning? Come on, open up your spirit. Open up your heart this morning, church. Uh, hallelujah. Yield yourself to God and you will see his presence. You will see his glory. Fill this house. Come on. I'm opening up this altar. If you come to worship this morning, make your way down here. Begin to exalt him. Begin to praise him. Begin to lift him up. He inhabits the praises of his people. Come on, would you create worship? Would you create praise this morning? Oh, that's it. Come on. Put your eyes closed. Stop looking around. Fix your hearts on God. Hallelujah. He wants to manifest himself to you this morning. Oh, oh that's it. Come on. Come on. Stir, stir it up. Stir it up in the Holy Ghost this morning. Put those hands together. Leap for joy. Leap for joy. Oh, Come on, we're welcoming him. Hallelujah. If you will put it on the altar, if you will put that praise on the altar, God will come and reveal himself to you. Come on, I wish somebody would be like those Jewish men. Come on, grab your brother, your sister, who you're praying for. Come on, somebody grab somebody and begin to drag them down here. Hallelujah, we're not trying to embarrass you, but we want you to have the blessings of God on your life. when it comes from your heart hallelujah there's purity in it hallelujah when you begin to pour out that praise hallelujah you'll feel God start to ascend upon you you'll feel his touch you'll feel his presence he'll overshadow you it'll become easy for you your lips will begin to move your mouth will begin to speak hallelujah and God will fill you with his spirit Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost this morning, you need the presence and the Spirit of God in your life, make your way down here. Make your way down here and begin to worship God and he will fill you with the Holy Ghost. This 
is how you're supposed to worship. This is how God is to be praised. Hallelujah. They did it so much, so much that the minister could not even stand to speak. He caught up Asata. Come on, Cross Creek. What would happen in 2017 if a body of believers would get so filled up with the presence of God that the glory of God would ascend on this house? We wouldn't even be able to preach to you because God would move in this place. Oh, yes. Come on. Come on, get into it this morning. Come on, I know you've spoken a few words, but come on, go beyond that this morning. Go beyond where you're comfortable. Push beyond your natural limitations this morning. Let the Holy Ghost begin to flow through you and pray through you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you do that, God will show up. He will show up. Come on, some of you still sitting in the back. Come on, get out from where you're at this morning. Join the body. Join the body. Be in one mind, one accord this morning. Let us all do it. Let us all dance. Let us all shout. Let us all worship. Come on, talk to him. Come on, lift your hands and talk to him this morning. Tell him how worthy he is, how holy he is, how mighty he is. Oh, that's it, come on. In, hallelujah, rather it be in the Holy Ghost or with your own tongue, exalt him, magnify him, praise him this morning.
Come on, that's it. When the praises go up, that's when the glory comes down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When you lift him up, he'll manifest in your life. He'll reveal himself to you. When you exalt him, when you worship him, when you praise him, hallelujah, he'll touch your life. You'll never be the same again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I wonder if somebody would begin to get a shout in their vessel this morning. Uh, hallelujah, let your voice out with all that you got this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, if you're sick in your body, you ought to be worshiping like nobody else this morning. Hallelujah. You don't have to walk out these doors this morning with the same headache you woke up with this morning. Hallelujah. With the same cancer that you walked in here with this morning. Hallelujah. Come to the altar. Worship God. He will touch you. He will reveal himself to you. Oh, yes. Come on, somebody. Come on. Let that praise flow from your lips this morning. Hallelujah. I wonder if somebody would begin to break a sound barrier. Hallelujah. Break. Hallelujah. Whatever. Put, put everybody else out of your mind, out of your thought. Get lost in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Then you will see his glory. Come on, tell him, tell him that he is your God. He is King of kings, Lord of lords. Tell him that he alone you will worship. Only him will you serve. Hallelujah. Come on, confess your affection to him this morning. Let him hear it from the abundance of your heart this morning. Come on, that's it. Come on, lift your voice up. Tell him, tell him. Come on, speak to him and tell him how much you love him. How he is your God.
want you to know this morning that the songs that we sing, I believe that lyrics to songs that we sing in church, that they should be orchestrated by the Spirit of God. And they ought to be penned and crafted from the Spirit of God. And they ought to have a spirit origin, God origin. The songs that we sing are not, should not just be our own thoughts. Because if we were to truly live our lives the way that we are singing about, then it would be revelatory to us simply because <clears throat> if you do all the talking, but you do no action, then all you are is just a bunch of talk. But there's an old saying that says that actions are louder than words. Right? So if you really <clears throat> trade your sorrows for joy and turn my mourning into dancing, and if you really <clears throat> do all of that, then there ought to be a change in your behavior. Your actions will show your heart. And if our behavior is not changed by God, then our actions are saying that God is not important to us. Hello. Because if all you do is just and you no know actions it shows the true nature of your heart. <clears throat> but if we really live day to day the way that we are speaking and we really believe that God is worthy of every praise, then we will be willing to listen and to change the way that we live in, watch this, response to such a worthy God. Our worship is in response to God. He reveals himself, he shows himself, and we feel his spirit. It's a response to him. He's reaching. He's reaching for some of you right now. Even if you don't believe it or understand it, I want you to know that God is reaching for some of you right now because he wants to have relationship with you. And if we will learn to trust him and to seek him and please him as, ma as much as we can, then our worship will demonstrate the behavior that God will change. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. God seeks for people to worship Him. And worship is something that He wants. He knows that it's good for us to worship Him. And it's good to be in spirit and in truth. And Jesus is looking for you to worship Him. Amen? God bless you. You're dismissed.